Leo, come here. Leo, come here. Come here. Come on, Leo. All right, guys, it's almost 6.15. And tonight, we're going to talk about rooftop tents. I brought my buddy, Leo. It's really sad. See how Leo's hopping? So, there goes Leo. He's only five, but it uh, seems like he's having a little trouble with his hip. Maybe it's been too much camping and climbing the ladder to the tent. So as I was saying tonight, we're going to talk about rooftop tent camp camping. Hopefully the connection stays good. But um, I'm just going to kind of let you see the, the setup a little bit, and then I'll get into it. But I'm going to talk about uh, different tents. I'm going to talk about things that uh, I didn't really expect when I started doing rooftop tent camping, meaning... Well, I'll get into it, but um, basically some modifications that I needed to make to be able to get into the rooftop tents. Yeah, it would probably, uh, you know, for years I would do the regular ground tents, but uh, once I started doing the rooftop tents, I've that's what I've stuck with. So Elizabeth is my uh, camping truck, just so you guys know. It's actually my everything truck. And, uh, for those of you that are new, I'll let you see the interior real quick. It's a chestnut brown with, uh, we call this the Mulliner package, meaning the diamond stitch. The, that is what it is. Dash is all done the door panels it's dirty too because uh there you go and then of course the side gull wing cases all right so before we get started where are you guys from i see some new faces or some new names popping up I'd be interested to see where you're from tonight and uh, it's just always interesting, I mean, to see where so many people are from. New headlights. So I'm trying. These are called KC lights. Letter K in the letter. Fish kill. Not too... F well, uh, all right, Michelle. There you go. Florida. Awesome. Des Moines, Iowa. Excellent. New York, there you go, perfect. So we got people from all over. So I was talking to a, a new client earlier today that, but he's out in California. He says it's kind of hard for him and his wife to watch the live since uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, beautiful area, Scott. But he said it was hard because uh, they're three hours behind. So at least they get to see the recorded. Awesome. Okay. Georgia. Jamaica. There you go. Brazil. Beautiful. All right. So I'm all over. All right. So guys, if you have any questions, um, I am looking at the phones. I'm doing it on the phone tonight. Much easier. Because instead of me sitting in front of a camera and blabbing at you, I just wanted you to see it. I figured it would be so much more educational and you're... I apologize. You will hear me holler at Leo every once in a while just trying to keep up with him because uh, he really loves the cats. So, and the neighbor's dogs, which is down the hill. And so he just gets into trouble. And there's a groundhog that's set up home behind the, the riding arena here. Massachusetts, not too far. Anyway, groundhog back there. And Leo keeps on trying to make friends with the groundhog, something that I don't want to happen. <laughs> I can only imagine. He uh, tried to make friends with the porcupine. And uh, thank goodness uh, porcupine wasn't interested. All right, so let's get into it. 
So this is a 1995 D110, D110 meaning it's the five door. And it does have the 300 TDI. And uh, I'm setting it up more and more for camping, getting more serious about it. It does have a VNT turbo, so a larger turbo. It has a large uh, eight time intercooler, meaning it's a larger intercooler. It has a performance cylinder head. The injection pump's been custom built. Um, you know, so engine-wise, a lot of performance. Uh, the transmission is a five-speed manual transmission, but the transmission does not have the highway gear in it because we didn't have that at the time when we did this build, which is almost about two years ago. So um, I probably won't add it because I'll end up selling this here in October time frame is what will happen. But suspension is really set up. I'm almost done with the suspension. So let me show you here. If I kind of lower down and I'll let you see it. It looks like on Instagram you can't really see the whole thing. On Facebook you can because I'm broadcasting live on both. But what I'm trying to show you <coughs> is uh, look at the space between the tire and the front arch. And then look at the space on the rear. So you can see it's sitting down in the back a little bit, but there's a lot of weight. So what I did is I do have the refrigerator back there. I do have the cabinets full. The road shower here, it has a road shower on it, which you just hook a hose and it's a pressurized tank. So I have water. If you haven't watched the video, I know it's 13 minutes long where I went camping in Vermont, New Hampshire. Do watch it. You'll see some of this stuff in action. But I do have the grill. It's in there. Like I said, the cabinets are in there. The refrigerator's in there. So there's a lot of weight in the rear, plus the roof rack itself. And then the awning. The awning, I love it. I love this awning, by the way. So this awning does not need bars, which is nice. My last one had bars. When you would open up the awning, you'd have a bar that would be out of ways, and you would trip over it and stuff. This one does not need it. But, um, and the awning covers the side here and rolls around the rear. So when you're at the back of the truck, you know, if you're cooking and it keeps the sun from beating down on you or the rain. And of course I do have the ARB refrigerator in the back. So it's a refrigerator, it can be a freezer. I don't have all my gear in here right now. I've unloaded it, but uh, this is all getting covered because these boards, this is some front runner and um, their boards leave. The quality is not what I would expect from Front Runner. So uh, what it was is the one was warped out a little farther, so I had to put a board in there. But that's all going to get covered in Alcantara suede. So you won't be able to see it. Let's see if this is... And, uh, you know, it's just a like a wood. It's ugly. So what I did is I covered the inside with an Alcantara suede. And then I've got my walking sticks and couple axes and a shovel and bear spray and water filter and tie downs towels that type of stuff in here all right so let me back up kind of show you what's going on with the rooftop tent so rooftop tent if you guys are considering getting a rooftop tent do send me a message um i can hook you up meaning that i am uh, an affiliate with iCamper. so uh I can get you a link to that if you want to buy an iCamper. So I did a lot of research. I looked at iCamper. I looked at CVT. I looked at Alucab. I looked at a lot of different tents. This one is a four-person tent. Has a memory foam mattress in it. I know that's crazy to go camping. Memory foam mattress. But it's a king-size bed, essentially. Which they call it a four-person. And the reason I went with that, you know, in case, just in case, if Christy... My wife wants to go camping with me. Then there's plenty of room for the two of us. Plus, Leo. Somebody like Leo. He's not a he's not a tiny little critter. And then Lucy, which... So, that way I can get both the dogs in there. I'll warn you. You should see me trying to get Leo into this tent. It's quite the scene. But anyway, so that's why the more room... Um, I'm going to get another tent. The next one's not going to be as big because it's a big tent and it takes up a lot of room. So the tent itself weighs about 165 pounds. The roof rack weighs 
about 100 pounds. The road shower holds 10 gallons of water. So you figure that's the shower itself weighs about 30 and then the water. So you're up to about 100 pounds with the road shower. The awning itself weighs about 85 pounds. So there's a lot of weight on top. And whenever you put the weight on top, you can definitely feel it in the suspension. Feel it when you're driving. That you'll be driving down the road and you're coming to a stop sign and you go to stop and you step on the brakes and the truck feels like this. I'm going to do it in video. You ready? It comes to a stop and it goes. You feel the suspension give forward and then give back. So that's the springs because the spring rate in here is a standard spring rate, meaning the coil springs on the suspension. So if you go to do this, a rooftop tent, the first thing, the first recommendation I have is start with the sway bars, roll bars. So I'll kind of show you what I mean up under the truck here. So I had the sway bars, the roll bars that you see a lot of times on my trucks, the yellow ones. I had to move those up to these. See the silver bar under there, guys? So that's an anti-roll bar. So I went from a 25 millimeter to a 29 millimeter on that with polyurethane bushings, front and rear, and uh, made a lot of difference because what was happening is not only the, the way it would squat and then lean back, but going around the corners, it felt tippy on the top. It just felt like it was swaying. It had too much sway. And uh, so sway bars helped that tremendously. Next step, I need to change the coil springs out. Like I said, coil springs are a standard coil spring. Um, I need to go to the ones that can handle about 600 pounds in weight in the rear. When I do that, it's going to raise the truck when I don't have all the gear on it about an inch and a half. So the back end will be higher than the front end. But I'm going to do the same, not the same rate on the front, but I'm going to change the springs on the front uh, reason like this front bumper it's coming off and I'm gonna put a winch bumper on here I believe I think I hate to clear it uh, kind of kill the cleanness of the build and put a winch on there I haven't needed a winch in this one but I've also been cautious knowing that I don't have a winch so I haven't gotten too crazy too stupid with it so but that's the consideration all right rooftop tent camping let me show you how this works. So you get the ladder. It just pops up. It's on a, basically a shock, a hydraulic shock. And then you just fold this over. I'm doing this one-handed, guys, so bear with me. And that's it. That's how easy it is. So it's a really quick setup. So when you think about rooftop tents, the pro, the benefit to it is... Hold on. Leo! Come here, Leo! Leo! I don't want him to go play with the neighbor's dog. All right. It's a, about a one-minute setup. It really is. So, goes up quick. You're off the ground, which is nice. I know people talk about, well, yes, it's that. That's good if there's any animals or, you know, any bears or anything like that. It is nice. Um... The things that I think why it's so nice is because you don't have to worry if it's snow camping, which I do a lot of, you don't have to worry about digging the snow out to be able to set your tent up. And then depending where you're going, if there's a lot of rocks and a lot of roots, you don't have to worry about trying to find a place. You just know you've got a place to sleep. It's quick. It's easy. So it's that simple. This uh, tent also does have a hookup. I added to it. So it does have some power in it too. So I can run some additional things in there. You can put a heater in here. Uh, propane heater is called a Mr. Buddy. They also offer a, uh, basically like a quilt lining that goes inside that helps you in the winter too. So it creates more insulation. And then they have an accessory tent that goes down over the front here where it's, the ladder would be inside of another tent. And uh, I thought about getting one of those and putting the dogs into it, but it doesn't really make sense because Lucy would climb right under it. So anyway, so here's the thing about rooftop tent camping. It's easier than throwing up a tent. 
Um, the only thing you have to do is level the truck so you can drive it up on some rocks or you can, you know, some of your firewood, put it up on your firewood to get the truck leveled so you're not, you know, sleeping kind of in a weird position. Um, not, a, not a hard thing to do. It's easy. It does get you up higher, which is nice, but which is also bad because some of you guys will be able to relate, some of you won't, but there's a point in life where you hit the age and it just seems like you've got to get up in the middle of the night and get the business done. And when it's 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning and you're half asleep and you're barefooted, it's uh, you have to pay attention coming down that ladder. I haven't had any accidents yet, but uh, you just have to pay attention. I've got a buddy of mine. I'll, I will actually disclaimer, he's older than me. A lot older than me. Lots older than me. Not really. But uh, he has a, uh, what do we call it? He has a special contraption inside the tent. So in the middle of the night, if he has to take care of business, he has a uh, basically a uh, funnel and a tube with a bag to take care of it. Oh, but anyway, I just climbed down the ladder. So that's, I kind of harped on that too long. Um, it's good for winter. It can be a four season tent. It's just, they're fun. So if you are into camping, I recommend it. Get a rooftop tent, uh, but you're going to have to rework that suspension. Otherwise, it's it's an unnerving feeling if you've got the stock suspension and you're trying to uh, drive around and drive at speed or even pull up to stoplights or go around corners. So that's the setup. This is a hard shell. There's also a version, too where it's um it has like an aluminum plate on top and it's a flat design this one's got a little bit of a like a i guess you can call it a hump or a flare or whatever you want to call it but with the flat version you can put bicycles up there canoes whatever you want to do on that it would just be really tall because right now at this height with the tent closed down i'm talking about at this height i cannot get it into the garage especially with these larger tires so so you can't put stuff on top of it that's my point uh set up accessory i'll kind of give you guys some pricing because a lot of times you ask that but uh you have to get the roof rack that's the first step this is a front runner swim line roof rack and the adventure rack will not work you have to use the front runner because it has flat slats I uh, believe last time I looked, roof rack was about 1800 And then you can install it. It's an easy process. So 1800 for the roof rack. Roof rack doesn't seem to make any noise. It seems to be fine. I mean, I did have to put the flaps in the front and adjust them to get rid of the noise. But it seems to be pretty good. So 1800 for the roof rack. And then uh, moving to the tent. This tent, I think, was about $4,400, $4,500 when everything was said and done because I got the different lining on top of the hardtop. But yeah, about, f just say low fours. So so now you're almost at 6000 for the, just the roof rack and the tent itself. And then, of course, you're going to do that. You want to do an awning. I highly recommend the Alucab. And... Uh, if you guys are interested in any of this stuff, just send me a message. I'll get you a link and uh, so you can get this. And the Alucab, I forget the price, but it was, I'm gonna just guess here, guys, of what I think I paid for it. It was just, all this stuff is, well, not all of it. The tents are easier to find now than they were. But uh, Leo, come here. I think the Alucab was $1,600, $1,700. And, um, so now you're, you know, almost 8,000. And then the road shower itself, I think that was five or 600 bucks. So, so there's the tenting part. And then you got to go into the suspension. Sway bars, to do those, the heavier duty sway bars, you're at about $800 for the sway bars. And you can install them, easy job. If not, if you're going to take it in, then you could probably add another $500 to that. And then the springs, the lowest cost on that, 
uh, springs that I'm looking at are the Dobson springs or terra firm, but springs are not very expensive. They're about 200 for the front and 200 for the rear. So now you have a good setup, a good tent setup. If you're going to run the refrigerator, like what I do in the back, and of course the front runner, the side cabinets, you don't need those though. Later on, you can do that. But the refrigerator itself, you're going to have to go to a dual battery system and I would recommend the deep cycle battery, which is like a marine battery, but it can take a lot of discharges and recharges and they just last longer. So dual batteries, each battery is about $500. So you need two of those. And then you need the setup to be able to do the dual batteries where one is charging and one is primary. So you don't lose, you lose your battery power. And batteries are important for me. So I'm able to, you know, charge all the, the cameras and the drones and all that stuff. So batteries, you're probably at another close to $2,000 for that by the time you get it all set up with all the gear. So that's it. I mean, uh, I know you're probably wondering, you know what? I think I'm just going to get a Defender and I'm going to stay at the Four Seasons because the amount of money it's, you have to spend to set up a truck and get all the gear, uh, it could be a decent amount of uh, times that you could stay at the Four Seasons or the Ritz. But I will tell you, there's nothing like it. Laying in the tent, it does have, I would climb up there. Maybe I'll climb up there for you guys real quick. But you can look up at the stars, you can hear the coyotes. Make sure my slats are all good. See if you guys can see in here. So here it is. There's the memory foam mattress. It could do to be a little thicker, to be honest. Um, has a picture of the world. And then, of course, it has the skylight in it. Sorry to make you dizzy, guys. But you can see the moon and all that. So there you go. That's what it looks like inside. And then, of course, you have the, you know, the screen net or you have the the clear mesh window so if it's raining and uh, it does well in the wind and then on the ends here is more windows so you can get flow from either side airflow that is so there you go all right guys any question because i am going to uh i'm gonna go get christy and take her out to dinner so she doesn't have to cook tonight because i'll tell you she doesn't want me cooking because it will be old standby chicken so anyway but if you have any questions, let me know. Appreciate you hanging out with me tonight. I hope I helped you and that you're going to say, yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to start doing tent camping. You don't have to um, have a Land Rover Defender, but I would highly recommend it. <laughs> you could do it with a Range Rover, just not a newer model Range Rover because there's no roof racks that will go on it that can hold the weight. Because you need a roof rack that can hold, you know, when you're doing your research, I mean, 600 pounds at least. So, all right. All right, well, you guys don't have any questions, so guess what? I'm going to go round up Leo and Lucy, and we're going to go to dinner. Have a great night. If I can do anything for you guys, if you want to get a rooftop tent or any of the gear like that, just send me a message, and I'll get you a link and go from there. But uh, I'll see you on the next video, too. Talk to you soon. Bye.